Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, a little while ago, OpenAI announced a new version of ChatGPT, ChatGPT 4V or 4 Vision, a version that can actually understand images. So you can upload an image, a photo, you can upload some text, you can upload math problems, and then it can analyze that and answer questions on the image that you've uploaded. Now, it's only available to ChatGPT Plus account holders, and it's been rolling out quite slowly. And finally, finally, it was enabled in my account. So I've been giving it a try and playing around with it. So here are nine things that you can do with ChatGPT for Vision. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so here we are inside of ChatGPT. I have ChatGPT Plus and to get access to GPT for Vision, you need to have a Plus subscription and also make sure you don't, it's not available with any of these plugins. You have to be on the default there and you should get this little ability here to attach images. So before you can only write text, now you can attach images and that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's start with something simple. So what I've attached here is a picture of a house plant. Now to me, that looks like a cabbage growing in a house plant, which surprised me a bit, which is why I took a photograph of it. But let's ask uh, ChatGPT with Vision what I'm actually looking at. So what is this plant? Question mark. So it's gonna go away. There's the image and it's gonna think about it. So it's an ornamental kale or ornamental cabbage. These plants are known for their vibrant and colorful leaves and they are often used for decorative purposes in gardens and landscapes, especially in the cooler months. So there you go. So it's not just a cabbage, it's an ornamental kale or ornamental cabbage. So I learned something and I guess that uh, ChatGPT got that right. Now, one of the amazing abilities of this vision version of ChatGPT is that it can read handwritten notes, handwriting, handwritten diagrams. So here I've got a flow chart. As you can see, it's basically a simple loop. It says I to zero. Is I less than 10? Yes. Print I, increment I, go back up to the top. No, then you end. That's really badly drawn. I mean, that is not nicely drawn in any way whatsoever. Neither is the handwriting that good. Let's see if ChatGPT can turn that into some Python code. Write the Python code for this flow chart. A flow plot appears to describe a simple loop where i is initialized to zero, correct? There's a check if i is less than 10, that's correct. Then the program prints out the value of i and increments i by one, that's all correct. This continues until i is no longer less than 10, at which point the program ends. Absolutely, absolutely spot on, that's the correct description of it. And now it's giving us some Python code, let's see, while i is less than 10, print i, increment i, that's it. It's a very simple loop. And so there you go, so <laughs> this is brilliant. This has just converted badly hand-drawn uh, flowchart into some Python code. Now we've got some more examples of it reading my handwriting uh, uh, or our handwriting in general in a minute. Let's try something else. Okay, so this is a chart I used in my recent video about the Tensor G3. This is the Geekbench 6 multi-core scores. And what I'm gonna ask it to do is convert this into a table. Make a table from this data. Here's a table representing the data from the image. Phone score, that's pretty good, yep. So phone and score, tensor G1, pixel six, 3,300. Tensor... Well, that's reading that pretty easily and it's giving us the table. So here is a good way of being able to take a, a graph that you that has all the data you want on it and then getting it convert that into a table for you uh, and then you can use that uh, for whatever you need it for. So that's that's doing the reverse. Sometimes we talk with a table and say, generate me a graph. This is actually taking the graph and giving you back the table. That's pretty impressive. So now I'm gonna give it a maths puzzle, a visual maths puzzle. This is actually quite uh, complicated. It certainly does take you a few moments to realize what's going on. The question is this, each firework A to F contains six stars. Which firework has not been launched knowing that each one gives us one, two or three stars of its corresponding color? So we'll cut and paste that into the actual question and see what it can do. Okay, so what it's done is it's gone through and it's analyzed each firework. Firework A, what, it tells you the number of stars that each one can do. Funny enough, that's not actually right. One, blue, two, red, three, green. That's not actually uh, right, actually, because firework A is one green, two, red, three, blue. But it's funny enough, it goes through it all and then it counts the number of stars that there are 
and then it works out that the number of blue stars is right, the number of green stars is right, but it says based on the star count, Firework C has not been on, which is actually the right answer. It's actually the right answer. Firework C hasn't been uh, done, but it's not because of the red stars, it's because of the yellow stars. So where did it get that wrong for C? It says there are one yellow, two green, three red. Well, C is actually one green, two red, three yellow. So there you go, it's got the colours wrong. Uh, and therefore it's misunderstood, but actually because it's worked out that it was, it said it had three red stars, actually because it's got three yellow stars, the yellow ones are missing, but because it's got the colours all mixed up, it still came up with the right answer. So there you go, that's pretty impressive, even though it didn't get there by the right route, it got the right answer. Okay, so the next thing I uploaded here is a US to Euro currency conversion chart covers a period of one year from October 2022 to October 2023. Let's ask ChatGP to describe what it is. What am I looking at? Question mark. So you're looking at a chart that displays the exchange rate between US dollars and euros over a one pe year period, which is exactly what I just said. Okay, it's breaking it down a bit. It's giving me the title. So it's read that text off the image. Remember, there's no text in that image, it's just an image, and it's actually it's doing optical character recognition to read that. Okay, and let's see if it comes up with any more interesting information as it digests what's on this image. Okay, so it's gone ahead and described that chart in pretty good accuracy, giving me, you know, every single aspect of what the different, you know, the volume chart and the graph and, you know, the, the different uh, values that are shown on the chart and the dates and everything. So it's read that uh, really well. I, I'll ask it this question. I don't know whether uh, it would meet, you know, what, what it means. Let's see if it understands. What does that mean about the value of the US dollar compared to the euro. Let's just see whether it, it comes up with some kind of analysis of this. I am not expecting it to, to do anything. The chart indicates that the value of the US dollar has decreased relative to the euro uh, over the past year. Here's what it means. Depreciation. The 7.6% decline mentioned in the chart title suggests that the US dollar has depreciated or weakened against the euro by the percentage over the year. Okay, so there you go. So it's now starting to look at this purchasing power. What does it mean if I was purchasing in, you know, dollars compared to, to euros and so on? So that's pretty interesting. So I, I'm pretty impressed that it could do that as well. Obviously, let's just throw this in here. You should never take financial advice or medical advice from uh, these uh, large language language models like ChatGPT, that's not what you should do. Always seek out professionals. Well, that's my little thing there to make sure that no one does anything they shouldn't do. Okay, let's move on to the next test. Now, if you ever do any family history research, you will come across documents like this. this is a census document from the UK, 1851, I think. And for me, the family that I'm interested in here is the Low family though uh, some people would transcribe this as love, but that's actually a W, not just a single V. We'll see what uh, ChatGPT makes of it. But it'd be interesting to get ChatGPT to transcribe this for me to t put this into you know, a table or something. So let's ask it to do that. Transcribe the text in this image. The image seems to be a historic record or census, that's correct. Here's a transcription of the visible parts of the image. And so now it's going ahead and reading that for me. Let's see how it does. Okay, so it's created a nice table with all the different columns there. Yes, and it's come up with love. Thomas love, Elizabeth love, it's actually low, but that's fine. Even human uh, transcribers make that same uh, error. It's easy to understand why, but it seems to be the rest of the stuff, head of the house, wife, daughter, uh, married, unmarried, that all seems to be working age. So that's really interesting and it's coming through and giving all of those people. So there you go. That's really, really interesting. And I've struggled many times. I've seen some of these documents to try to read them, to try to work out uh, what exactly is that written there because people write them in a rush and they write them in this very cursive handwriting and it's doing a pretty good job there of transcribing that for me just that one mistake putting love rather than low but I'll accept that. Now here's a, an AI generated picture funny enough uh, you can see that there's two two moons or one and a half moons in there let's ask chat GPT what is it that we're seeing please to describe describe this image. The image depicts a dramatic and surreal seascape at the forefront. Tumultuous waves crash with their frothy white crests cr uh, 
contrasting against the deep blue of the ocean. There are two lighthouses in the scene. One stands prominently in the middle, tall and striped with alternating red and white bands. Its lantern room at the top is lit, casting a soft glow. Another lighthouse, slightly shorter and simpler in design, is positioned a bit behind the first one and so on. So there you go. So it's giving out some information about the picture to add to the series. Another celestial body resembling a planet or smaller moon is visible to the right side of the image nearer to the horizon. A solitary bird, possibly a seagull, is captured in flight and so on. So it's pretty good at describing uh, what it's seeing. So top marks there. So here's another handwriting one. What I'm showing here on the left is an unbalanced binary tree, an unbalanced AVL tree. And then on the right is having done a right rotate, it, it creates the balanced version. Now, this is quite a complicated subject and there's left rotates and right rotates and so on. I want to ask ChatGPT if it understands what this picture is and give me maybe a lesson plan for a high school computer science class based on this image. So let's see what it can do with that. Create a lesson plan for a high school computer science class based on this image. Okay, so it's gone ahead and created quite a comprehensive uh, lesson plan. By the end of this lesson, students will be able to understand the concept of balanced and unbalanced binary trees and demonstrate the ability to perform a right rotation to balance an unbalanced tree. Well, that's exactly what that diagram is showing. So it says you can need some graph paper and some pens and paper. Start with a discussion on trees in computer science, explain what binary trees are and how they are structured, and introduce the concept of balanced and unbalanced. Then it goes on through about how you talk about the term unbalanced and uh, right rotation. And then even there's a group activity. It's given me for 10 minutes, divide into the and give them a different unbalanced tree on paper. Arch each group divide the right rotation to balance the trees. There's a practical ex uh, explanation of doing this all about the right rotation. And it does say at the very end here uh, that it's, it should be good to look at left rotations. So it does actually give a pretty good plan here, just based on that diagram, which was just a drawing, I wrote a few words on it, and it's come up with a pretty good uh, lesson plan, even with the number of minutes I would need and the activities for the class, absolutely brilliant. So well done there, uh, ChatGPT. Okay, one last test, I'll give it this uh, yellow blank image and see what it says. Just read what you see. Oh, it is blank. By the way, I love the Gary Explain channel. Well, that's very kind of you to say, ChatGPT. I, I, I enjoy using ChatGPT as well. I'm, I'm glad we are friends. Well, of course, what have I done there? I've actually written, it is blank. By the way, I love the Gary Explains channel in a slightly different color of yellow on that blank image there. And probably with the video encoding and so on, you can't see it. So it looks like it's a blank yellow uh, image, but in fact, it's got that word written on it. So there you go. Uh, by the way, I love the Gary Explains channel. Well, well so do I. So there you go, ChatGPT for vision. I thought that was pretty amazing, especially the fact I can just scribble something down on a piece of paper, feed it into ChatGPT, and out comes a lesson plan or a transcription of what I've written. Absolutely amazing. Love to know what you think about it. Which was your favorite use case? Do you have an interesting use case that you have thought about? Do you have ChatGPT Plus? All these are great things that I'd love to discuss with you in the comments below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.